Just picked this up from Woodcraft and I'm super excited for this. Let's check it out. What I really like about this unit is that it's got two, um, two locking, two non-locking, but they're all swiveling. So you have, if you're in a tight shop, you have room to maneuver this. Plus it's not very wide, so you can get in and out a lot of places. It'll handle 250 pounds. This is actually pretty, pretty good capacity. Do we do it backwards? Yeah, we did do it backwards. I think this is right. Because yeah. we gotta go flat. Okay. So, I put this so it's a little higher than my table saw. So you can lock it in that position. This one automatically locks. Well, let's see how she does with a four by eight sheet on here. So one thing I will say though, is that it's pretty high up, which could be an issue. We'll see how that works as far as keeping stable and all that stuff. I'm going to pull out a piece of a one inch ultralight four by eight. Uh, so pretty decent weight on that guy. This is going to be a test of me and this. <laughs> okay, it's centered. I'm going to release the brakes. Now I'm going I'm to release this lock and see if it uh, wants to come back at me when I don't want it to. No, it's, it is definitely not. So that's nice. I have quite the system without using this method. You would think it, the hooks should be on my side. So when it's all said and done, you got to turn this thing around, right? Let me go ahead and spin that around so just to see if I could do it in here. So that's locked in, so you can see if I had it up just a touch higher, that, that this would be okay, but. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna raise it up. Wheels really are nice. Let's check out how it does on the, the um, mat there. The wheels are definitely nice. I'm gonna try a couple more and just see how I like it. Okay, let's see how this does. So I've got this thing where I can just tilt it up. So I raised it up higher than the saw so it will click in. And it's pretty easy, right? Um, the only thing is I wish there were locking casters on both sides so that I could unlock it without having to go around in between. It's just not very easy. And I'll tell you something, I'm really trying to like this thing, but it's just simply too high and I just, I don't like that. I guess I would like it if it was a little lower. Why does it have to be so high? So I guess really the only way to lower that is to lower the actual table height. So you can see right there, 37 inches is basically where I'm at. So that would be the lowest it's at. The fact that I have to have this platform raised up all the way makes the hooks really high. So 
as it stands right now, those hooks for me are just up too high. And so I called uh, Woodcraft and they're gonna allow me to return this. But you can see how high these are. Almost 14 inches up. Though the whole thing is nice. It just doesn't work for me. And I came across an alternative and I feel very fortunate to have found this. Um, this is going to be a uh, dolly, so to speak. I'm going to put it together. And then this is something that I came across online in a forum. And I actually went to the place that uh, he makes these. It was two hours away from my shop. So can you believe that? The luck of this? When this is all put together, I will show you what this is all about. So what I'm going to do, this comes um, CNC'd, so it's all cut, even pre-drilled for the screws, except there's no pre-drilling in these, which I, that would be the only thing I would say would be nice to have. But um, I'm going to go ahead and bottom this out all the way to the end, so there's uh, no room. There's going to be um, a pipe that goes in here. That needs full clearance inside here, so we need to make sure this is bottomed out. I'm not going to glue this uh, because if I want to take this apart, for some reason I want it to come apart with no problems. So the first thing is I'm going to go ahead, hang this over so I can just tack this. And I'm going to use a 23 gauge. My experience with screws going into plywood is that you should probably pre-drill. This is the next step. This part here goes in there. Like I said, there's not a lot of room. That's pretty sweet. So you can see there's um, basically a concavity to these pieces. So essentially a fluting bit created that so that it wraps around the pipe. Much better than a square piece. All right, now the casters are uh, these heavy duty, um, half are locking and the other half aren't. So if I take these and I just alternate the locking versus, you know, with the non-locking, this whole thing, I mean, the fact that the guy makes these with the CNC and he provides really nice hardware with it, So uh, these are double locking, keeps it from swiveling and rolling. As he says, this is a really, really super high quality uh, three inch caster. So that is really nice. I'm gonna put that on. This type of job right here, if you glued this, the glue would be uh, not necessary the way that this is. Uh, so the ability to take this apart if I needed to is really nice. Okay, so at this point you're probably wondering how in the world is this going to help me move plywood? And uh, well, let's find out. So these areas here, I will be able to put some plywood on there's uh, enough for a few sheets there. Check this last part out. Okay, and you're still probably wondering how in the world is that going to help me move plywood. Well, let's find out. <laughs> this is crazy, I know. Yeah, actually it's in the name. Let me go ahead and take this over. And, man, it just, it just rolled over that uh, like it was nothing. Um, wow. How cool is this? Look how nice this is. 
So I know I could have made this, but I'll tell you what, the design of this and all that stuff, I mean, this is a uh, impressive feat here, whoever, I know the person who came up with it, but he came up with a really clever idea, uh, solve some serious problems of what to do, how to move uh, sheet goods around your shop effectively. Uh, and also not just that, but other uses as well. So let me go ahead and um, see what this is like putting a piece of uh, a four by eight on here. Now, of course, I could pull it out at this point, or I could keep it and use it as a helper as I bring this around. And basically bring it as far up to the saw as I want. And I can actually use the saw with it, right? It'll just roll with it. Or um, most likely in my situation, I probably won't be doing that because I have the support here. But you can see how nice that is. And then you can just wheel it out. Now I have it up higher than the table uh, saw. So I mean, obviously you got to lower it to a certain amount um, if you want it to be usable with the saw because you don't want it to be too high. This gives you quite a bit of options here. And the support is really cool. And uh, now if I want to wheel it back and put this piece back down, um, what I do is just back it out. And again, I have this piece here, this support piece. Um, so it's not like I can, you know, I have, have to kind of go around this support piece. And now get it to a certain point where you feel like you can, can, you can control that drop. And look at this, how it grips it as I bring it down. And the casters aren't locked or anything. It's just gripping the material really well. It's pretty amazing. If I do it without the tool, uh, in this position, it works pretty well because all I have to do is lay this down right here and I can just lift it right up, but it doesn't help me when I get around the tool or if I'm coming from different directions or you know, various other things. This. So obviously that's a really easy way of doing this. Obviously it works great as a uh, panel carrier, but it also works great as a support piece. I can use this to support panels as I'm ripping them. In this particular case, I'm wanting to rip a little bit off of this piece and you can see right here if I didn't have this support it would just be falling down it's very difficult to hold them with a slider but that's you know a really nice thing to have a little bit of support back here now I didn't actually put any piece on there to lean up against let's do that Holding that nicely. And it just leans right up against here. You can raise this up. It's dropped down quite a bit, so you can raise it up at least another, I would say, eight inches. So it's going to put these pieces a little bit more vertical. And you're going to be able to store a few on each side. That's pretty sweet. So that's, that'll, that'll be where I'm gonna store this guy. Lock the caster so it can't move. It's a great spot for it. Very cool. All right, why don't we go ahead and put this saw to work. I'm gonna go ahead and bevel the blade and we are gonna make some miter fold floating shelves. Well, of course, as I started to bevel this, I realized that the 
stop that the factory has set is not quite exactly 45 degrees. In fact, it's less. I'm going to make it so it's a little greater than 45. Now, I'm not like too concerned about this being set at 45 degrees, right? Because if I want to go over it, I want to go over it. So let me see if I can back this out. The largest wrench I have is a 24 millimeter and that is not big enough. So I'm going to have to use some sort of a pliers to get in here. And this is very, very awkward. All right. That's good to me. Nice. Now, if you're going to be doing this where you're beveling the blade and you're going to be having the beveled part go up against the rip fence, what you want to do is make sure that you don't have a space under your saw fence. Because if your rip fence is raised up off of the cast iron, it could be a real problem if you're running a beveled piece under it, right? It'll just go right under it. So you don't want that. Now this fence, because it does adjust, um, I have it set, however, to be raised up off of the cast iron a little bit when I tighten it down. So you can see uh, it's okay there, but it's still up a little bit. And watch when I tighten it, see how it raises up? That's how I have it set so that sawdust doesn't get wedged under there. So I made them a little bit big uh, from, you know, when I built it. So I had a little bit of movement in there, which allows this piece to drop down, even though the main fence is up a little bit. Okay, so I just tighten them up and you can see how tight it is. It's touching the cast iron. So now when I run my uh, beveled piece, I won't have a problem. So that's great. Okay, well, let's get to cutting on this saw. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I put my rib fence to two and a half inches to make these. Uh, these are going to be the fronts of the shelves. So I need a total of four but I make an extra couple so uh, just in case and this is one of the main uh, shelf parts where that's the 19 inch deep one and then after cutting all those um, to width I um, cross cut them and using this saw obviously it's very similar to using a uh, cross cut sled on the uh, cabinet saw now, the first step is making sure this is nice and tight to the table, and I use the tape to bring them together uh, and hold everything while I fold it over. Um, use my layout lines and glue, and yes, I did put glue on the wrong side there. Uh, nail them in there, and I'm using one and five eighths glue, um, one and five eighths brads. Clean up that glue. <laughs> That's classic. <laughs> and uh, put the glue on the miter. And it's really important to make sure that the miter has plenty of glue on it. And uh, you, want, you just wanna make sure that it's not dry in any area. You want that glue to squeeze out real nicely. That tape's gonna protect the um, countertop so I don't have to worry about cleaning it up. And just look at how nice this is. So when I do this, all I'm focusing on is making sure that it's pulled tight to the back and when I'm nailing this I just want to squeeze it to the back so I know that that um, is completely tight and everything is pulled together so I'm going to push down and use my pinner I'm actually pushing down and squeezing towards the back as I'm doing this I love this method it takes a little bit more time to put together but once you do beautiful now when I pull the tape off usually it pulls a little bit of the surface off too, right? So that's okay. I don't mind that um, because I'm just gonna, the whole thing gets sanded anyways. You know, making them with this half inch material makes them so much lighter. Um, even though there's pretty thick interior parts. All right, let me go ahead and take off this tape here. This is what I'm talking about, that little line right there. And if you're working with plywood, um, it can um, peel up a little bit of the uh, veneer. 
So be very careful when you're peeling up the plywood. Um, this tape works really well. There's a packing tape that's got um, like webbing in it that's a little bit stronger than this and provides a little bit more of a, um, almost like a clamp. But the problem is, is that I, I think that stuff sticks a little too much and it peels off the veneers a little bit more. So I actually prefer to use this stuff. To me, this is nothing, right? I mean, it's absolutely nothing. It didn't even peel off the, uh, the writing there. It just takes a little bit off. But overall, when you're, when you're doing this kind of thing, I mean, this is nothing. Because once you sand it, right, it's all gonna be gone anyways. And really, the most important thing is this absolutely perfect joint. I mean, seriously, if this doesn't get you like, you know, excited, I don't know what does. You know, I, I just find this to be totally rewarding to do it this way. And if you're doing them on the ends too, where you have a floating shelf in the middle of a wall, let's say, and these have to be covered as well, you can miter the ends as well, right? That's nice. Okay, a little sanding with my five inch sander and my block sander. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, install these next time, as well as scribe countertops and put cabinets in.